something to do with aging of some very limited no, limited tissues, and it certainly appears to have a role as a sort of um, ancillary side effect of certain other disease states. But in general, the cells that we have that need to divide a lot more than they could um, in, in cell culture, they're able to do so because they express a sufficient amount of this enzyme called telomerase that compensates for the telomere shortening that happens when a cell divides. Okay. So the cells in which one observes this thing called the Hayflick limit, this finite amount of ability to divide, are cells that, when they're in the body, just don't need to divide very often. Hmm. Okay. Well, as far as, the, as far as the ethics angle on this, I think if we if we maintain our honourable intentions behind it, I think it's a very good technology. But uh, a lot of the socio political issues that are going around today have to be fixed before we actually get into the meat of this thing. I think. I think that's right. And so the question is, what do we do? Do we say let's slow down the development of the technologies until we're satisfied that we know what the first logical solutions are going to be, or should we go on and develop the technologies as soon as possible, but also in parallel? do our best to come up with a forward plan in terms of the first logical implications. I say that that second approach is the best way to go because ultimately every day we delay, we are condemning another 100,000 people to an unnecessarily early death, and that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But again, you're wanting to get everybody more life. You know, commerce is the goal of the Tyrell Corporation, <laughs> that's the line from Blade Runner, but at the same time, so many of uh, the elite think tanks and powerful organs think there's too many people and have an absolute disgust for humanity, and all they talk about is culling the herd, as uh, Prince Philip likes to do. Well, all I can say is that if there are people who want to reduce the size of the, pop the human population, they don't seem to be doing very well. <laughs> well, th th they have reduced the growth mightily in China and, and, and uh, Africa oh, I, and other I, places. I think most of the reduction of growth has happened voluntarily. Certainly China is an exception in every other country around the world in which there's been a sharp decline in the number of children that the average woman is having. Well, I don't think infertility is voluntary. I don't think the infertility numbers are, are voluntary. What are you, uh, Doctor, have you looked at any data that deals with life and fertility and things? Uh, at at, at Weiber Sings, it's massive infertility in women and sperm count numbers plunging in Western males? Oh, certainly. The, the situation with male fertility I'm not talking about at all. I'm talking about the choices that women are making to have fewer children than they used to and to have them later. And, uh, and my understanding of the data is very much that the overwhelming majority of the decline in fertility that's being seen is voluntary, though, of course, there is a small increase in female infertility as well. And that could be, that could be due to sociological pressures as well, I mean. Yes, you know, but... You, get, you have well, these hypochondriacs that think they're sick and that make themselves sick. Well, uh, look, I've seen the numbers. A large portion, but not even half, of it is that it's 45-year-old professional women who finally want to have a child. But, but no, we have massive infertility now developing in, in 18, 20, 30-year-old women, men. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of fertility doctors. I've seen the numbers. It's, something's going on. Yeah, certainly for men, there's plenty going on, and there's a lot that's not known about how it's going on. But, of course, the technologies that I'm talking about, uh, among, 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 among the applications of those technologies, will be technologies that can restore fertility by making, for example, testicular stem cells work better. I understand. That's amazing. And that certainly is something that's important and can certainly help a lot of people. We'll be right back in this next segment with a couple more segments with Aubrey de Grey, Dr. Aubrey de Grey. And uh, we will also continue with your phone calls, Ted, Harry, and others that are patiently holding. I've got some really serious questions I'm going to be getting to on the other side for our guest. And uh, as I said, we'll continue to take your calls. You can check out his website by going to Infowars.com. We've got a link right over there to it right now. Yeah, pocket full of posies, ashes to ashes. We all fall down, grave digger. Going back to our guest, uh, apropos, I didn't even know that bumper music was coming up. It randomly plays. Aubrey de Grey talking about life extension technologies. What about accidents? Uh, in the future, if people live into 150 years old, will they become accident-obsessed? Because statistically, um, the most dangerous thing is automobile accidents or electrocution or grounding. I mean, will we become a society basically encased in uh, styrofoam so as to not be hurt? Or will we have robot nannies that take care of us? I think we will take much more care not to expose ourselves to risks. 
but I think obsessed may be too strong a word. I think one consequence of a, an increased quality and quantity of life will be that we place a higher value on life, and I think that's going to make the world a much less violent place because people just will take other people's lives more seriously, same as they take their own more seriously. But with regard to accidental death, I think there are going to be lots of ways in which we just throw money at the problem. For example, with regard to automobile accidents, we already have in the military plenty of technology available that can involve you know, very sophisticated sensors to invoke automatic overrides in the case of human error, whether on the part of the driver or someone, or, the, or a pedestrian, for example. It's just that those technologies are really expensive, so nobody puts them into your average automobile. But exactly, and then we over. have, as I said, computers keeping us safe, running everything, yeah. and then they take over. How do you deal with that? Because by the time we get these life extension technologies and can basically you know, keep postponing death almost indefinitely, you know, barring you know hyperactive super viruses that come out of nowhere, or meteors hitting us, or jet airplane crashes. I mean, there'll always be something that'll have a fix for that. But it's a practice on ourselves, you know, perfecting it. How do you deal with the artificially intelligent computer taking over? Well, I sometimes feel that computers have already taken over my life. I seem to spend my entire day sitting at one. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, seriously, I think that it, so long as it's gradual, so long as we make our own choices to, with regard to how much we get computers to do for us, and we know that we're making those choices and that we can always reverse them, I don't really see a big problem with it. But we've already got computers, pretty much designing computers, and no one person knows how the whole computer works. You've got all these expert eggheads who are geniuses and have trouble understanding it. I mean, we're already getting there where the computers are going to take total control. That's Even right. if they're not AI and evil like the Terminator, it's just it's just that they'll just start making decisions. It is important not to let the whole thing go, go out of control, and some of my good friends actually are working on precisely that problem on the design of computers. Oh, I want to hear a little bit about that. So stay there, sir. we got a break. We'll be back in one minute with more calls. Please stay with us. All right, let's go ahead and go back to your calls. Ted in Texas, you're on the air with Dr. Aubrey DeGray. Go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. I, like I spoke to you a couple weeks ago about the swimming pool water, and um, I, you know, I originally called to suggest that eliminating chlorine and tap water, you know, drinking chlorinated tap water might produce some life extension. And uh, as I researched the article that you asked me to, to do, uh, I found that they're, they've begun replacing chlorine uh, with chloramines, which is a far more dangerous oxidizer and chemical. And I was wondering if Dr. Uh, Gray knew anything about that specifically. Yeah, the cocktail of toxic waste in our water. I, you know, I brought up toxins last week with him, and he said that wasn't as big a problem. But from all the studies I've seen, uh, I mean, massive increases in cancers, you name it, with all the stuff they're adding, the stuff we're breathing, and the mercury from the coal plants, Doctor? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to belittle these things. These things are certainly things that we need to worry about and we need to try to prevent. However, we have to remember, we have to keep a sense of proportion about it if we're talking about life extension and the postponement of age-related disease because we know that... I mean, life expectancies are, are continuing to increase despite the increase in all of these pollutions, pollutants and so on. And, you know, that's the simplest form of evidence that says that the main determinant of how long we live is not what we take in in terms of pollutants, but rather what's going on intrinsically in our bodies as a side effect of our normal okay. metabolism. Ted, did you send me that story you put together? Yes, I do, and you guys have the, uh, the website, the page that it's on with some photos. Okay, did they post it? Um, I don't know. That was I just gave it to him. I can give it to you right now. No, just send it to Aaron at InfoWars. Thank you. Uh, Harry in Florida, you're on the air with Dr. DeGray. Go ahead. Yes, hello, Alex. This is Harvey in Florida. How you doing? Harvey, go ahead. Yep, it's great to talk to you and your guest. I'd like to ask him about what he thinks about the uh, patent thing. Like uh, Geron has patented the telomerase gene. What does he think about the patenting and how the investments... Well, the tremendous investment leads to a rush to market like it did with the plant genetics. I don't have any real fears in that area. I think the market will look after itself in regard to all of this. And I think one of the main reasons for not being scared is that the therapies that are going to be necessary in order to comprehensively postpone aging will have many, many different components. 
each of which will have been developed by different people and whose patents will be owned by different people. So there will be a requirement to have a great deal of collaboration and business common sense, shall we say, in order to... Well, let me to... throw this out, though, Doc, and I understand you're real positive about all this, and I'm not saying it doesn't have a positive sign. It's one thing if it's for humans, and we know a lot of bad drugs and things do get on the market, but I agree there's more focus on that than, say, GMO crops. But there's total evidence of GMO crops, and the ones that have been heavily altered, causing all sorts of problems. And, 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 and so I don't have confidence that, 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 this, that there's not going to be all sorts of disasters. It's certainly important to regulate the, uh, the, the experimental testing of things that are used on all, the, on all of the living world, absolutely, because the knock-on effects can be very unpredictable. And I don't deny that there, were, there have been some cases, not, not just in the case of drugs um, applied to humans, in which things have been pushed forward too quickly. Sure. Sure. And Anything else, uh, caller? Yes, yes, Alex. Uh, right. I was an early investor in plant genetic companies, and uh, it seems like mostly the the, uh, the wondrous things that they promised us, they've actually used most of the inventions t towards evil, like putting uh, more nicotine in the tobacco plants, uh, may be able to use more chemicals on the plants. So there's a tremendous potential for this to be meet, misused. And as a matter of fact, they forced the... Uh, the people in our country to take it without any labeling. It's all in all our foods without any labeling. I'd like to hear his remarks about that. Well, I, this is not very really Mr. Degray, area, Mr. Degray, we've got a break right now. Come back and finish up, please. And this will be our final segment, Mr. Degray. Then we're going to then go to Tibet with what's happening there with a guest uh, as well on that subject. We'll be right back here on the GCN Radio Network, prisonplanet.com. We have um, Urgent Tenzin who is the uh, director for the Tibetan Center for Human Rights and Democracy, uh, to give us uh, the inside scoop on what's going on there, and he, he's on hold right now. I wanted to go back to uh, Aubrey DeGray. Mr. DeGray, uh, thank you for coming on with us. Thank you for uh, spending time with us. Just finishing up that fellow's uh, last question when he was talking about uh, some of the unsavory things he witnessed as an investor. Yeah, I mean, I think this is certainly true, The um, that, that some things are not, always you know, rolled out in the optimal way. But ultimately, let's remember, we do all live in a democracy, and um, our elected representatives are the people who control all this. Their ultimate goal is to get re-elected, and so it's really just a question of how much we care. If we want something to be done, then we can get it done. Well, Dr. DeGray, I hope in the next six months or so we can have you back up to get more in-depth in all of this, and I really appreciate your time. Fire out the name of the new book and the website. It, the name of the new book is Ending Aging, and the website is mfoundation.org. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for having me on the show. Take care. Okay.